a couple of years ago, uh, the company that I worked for uh, sent me to do some business in Florida. And it was in the, um, I always get them mixed up, Palm Beach, West Palm. I think there's two of them, but there's a big airport there. And, um, flew down there and I met with some folks and then uh, flew out just a couple of days later. So it was your you know, typical flight that you would think of when it comes to business, except my company was doing its absolute best, just like most today, to save some money. My flight left from that area, went to Orlando, flew to Miami, and then back up to Philadelphia. First and foremost, you should know about me, I am not a good flyer. I'll give you a heads up right now if you ever see me on a flight run. Um, <laughs> never been attuned to it, but I do my best to adapt. I do take medicine to help me to fly. It usually is four singles of Smirnoff and a splash <laughs> of Sprite. So I was on my flight getting prepared to take my medicine and I noticed that somebody got on to sit on the seat in front of me. And I don't know if you've ever experienced this when you see people, even though I, I, I did not know this fella and his wife, whom I would call in the prime of their life of senior citizens, if you will, um, tan, looking great, obviously had just come from a great time and they sit in the seats right in front of me. But there was something familiar about this older guy, if you will. Reminded me of my dad or my grandfather, and I don't know if you've ever experienced that. There's just something about some people. Well, as I sat down on the flight, took off, and I took my medicine. Um, we, you know, we're only in the air for just uh, a little while, and all of a sudden, this just amazing stench. I, I got to tell you, I hate the fact that airlines do not serve food anymore. Um, because everybody loves to buy their own and bring it on. And it seems like the only thing that's ever available, you know, at your, you know, departure is the stinkiest, smelliest sandwiches ever, right? And, and so no matter what it is, they're just absolutely disgusting. So that's what this gentleman in front of me had opened up the aluminum foil and started to partake of whatever in the hell this was. And of course, I'm just like, oh God. So anyway, so we uh, eventually land very short flight right into Orlando. And then uh, we had to pick up a couple of folks, few people get off, you know how it is, very full flight. And this family got on and they had a child with them, nine or 10 year old boy beaming from, you know, truly ear to ear with Mickey Mouse ears on because he has just come from Disney from the absolute first time. You can tell he met everybody from Tinkerbell to Mickey to Minnie and he was just excited and he had his mouse ears on and he was ready to go. So then from there, and they sat, excuse me, I'm sorry, they sat just up here kind of, uh, I would say 10 or 11 o'clock to me, a couple of seats up, up to my left. We take off again, and it was about this time that the fellow in front of me, who was very familiar to me, fell asleep. And there was something, like I said, I couldn't put my finger on what it was about this guy, and then he started to snore. <laughs> and he snored with such purpose. I don't know if you have an older gentleman in your life, and, and one day I really aspire to be this guy, uh, who can snore and emphasize a point at the same time. Is the kind of guy that always falls to sleep when golf is on the TV, but God forbid you ever cut that channel off because he will wake up immediately and you know, with that, you know, that, what are you doing? I'll kill you all, you know, kind of uh, snore. So he's snoring with that. Of course, we're taking off again. More medicine for Dave. Okay, so we now go to Miami and we pick up this other, you know, family who come in and of course they have a baby. Typical airline fear of having a baby on an airplane. Well, this baby um, sits directly behind the young man with the Mickey Mouse ears. So the baby is just absolutely fascinated with the Mickey Mouse ears, and the man has woken up and fortunately was able to go back to sleep. All right, so in front of me. So this is what's going on. I'm looking at the baby, the Mickey Mouse ears, and this man who snores with such amazing gusto. Have you guys ever seen that movie, The Perfect Storm, where the meteorologist is sitting there going, if this cold front comes out of Finland, and he's watching, he sees the tornado and the storms and all that, it'll be the most amazing. So I'm waiting on this one. In fact, I didn't even have to have any medicine because I'm anticipating what's about to happen. Because of course, as we take off, the baby has to have the Mickey Mouse ears. The kid, very upset, keeps saying, quit it, quit it, right? Every time he says quit it, the baby starts to cry. 
Now this is like, you know, the good 18, 20 month year old baby. So just enough to get up in the parent's lap and really get a hold of stuff. So he's really annoying this kid, but he's not gonna lose the ears. Every time the baby starts to cry, the man snores with that amazing, what the hell, I'll kill you all. <laughs> and farts. <laughs> so imagine at one point when I realized this scene in this scenario that if anybody could have just ever seen it, the kid reaches for the ears. The kid says, quit it, baby cry. Wah! <laughs> then, I hit the button, bing, because I need more medicine. So that goes on for just a couple of rounds until eventually the plane lands. I grab my stuff from the overhead because I packed very lightly and scooted on out of there. When I got home, a couple of days later, I received an email because where I work, I so happen to work in television. Apparently, the old man in front of me recognized me and did not appreciate the fact that I had blown by him to get off the plane so quickly. <laughs> Knowing that if I wanted to keep my job and food on my table, I could not necessarily answer this email in the way that he deserved. So I did the only thing that I could. And I'm not kidding, if you came to my house and opened my computer, you would see this file. Instead of the email response that he deserved, I opened up my file that says just for Story Slam and wrote it down <laughs> to make sure I found eventually the topic that I could share this story with. So there you go. <laughs> Thank you.